Well, hello everybody from Crow Agency in the Crow Tribe, Crow Nation, Native American Reservation. I'm here with Daniel Nose's Gun. Daniel Nose's Gun, who's the brother of Miriam Nose's Gun, who I just visited last week and got a great video with. And guess what? Sister, brother, both barbers. Mm -hmm. Your wife? Lorna. Lorna also is a hairdresser, right? right? That's correct. And he's gonna shave me right now. Well, Let's you, do it. we're gonna we're gonna just, just gonna trim the beard up. Don't shave it all off, okay? Oh no. D don't skin shave me. Okay? Right. Okay, okay, just I I but he, he's but he's a barber for like 28 years in in Billings. 30 years. 30 years. Just call it 30 years. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Okay. This is the, in the campgrounds of the uh, where they do the Crow Fair, which is the big powwow, rodeo, just general celebration. TP capital of the world. TP capital of the world. How many teepees come out here? Oh, less than a million, more than a hundred. It's somewhere in the middle there. And right now we're in somebody's camp. See, they have these these uh, these boards up, these sticks up. This is a this is a campsite, but and then there'll be there'll be teepees all around here. So right now we're set up right in here. We don't have any 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 uh, we don't have any any rooftop to this, but that's better. We're all we're all in nature, and I'm gonna get a beard trim in nature. Yes. With my my new friend Daniel, Native American. You come from a long line of haircutters. A long line of haircutters. Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. We don't have we don't have running water here. We don't have electricity. We don't need it. We're doing it old style. And I'm going to be using a traditional uh, scalping knife. A scalping knife? <laughs> <laughs> now, any last words? Uh. <laughs> My last will and testament. <laughs> the thing about this stuff here, when from the can, uh huh, it cakes up pretty fast. Well, it, it does. It, it, it's thick stuff, right? Yeah, because that's why you always have to have water on hand. With a with a hot lather on, you never you never have to worry about that. Well, we got bottled water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're making do. About as old school as you get. Old school is what I like. Oh, um, oh, th this is your son, right? Israel. Israel, what's up? High five. How old are you? I'm nine. I'm gonna be ten soon. He's soon ten. Ladies, look out for him. <laughs> He's becoming a man. Yeah, see, it's already starting to cake up. You want that bottle of water? I've got it. I don't know, he's got it. He's slicing through pretty good. Mm, open, you can't take the top off. There you go. You pour a little bit on my fingers. Okay. It's good to have All a helpful right. son. Oh, I feel it. it it's, uh, Softer now. Mm -hmm. now. If you feel the sudden urge to cry, go ahead and just let her out. Okay, but I don't, <laughs> don't want to move my face. <laughs> well, you got the razor to it. But warm tears might kind of help soften up the beard. <laughs> <laughs> warm tears. Warm tears will always help. <laughs> Can I ask you, did, did you grow up on, on any of the reservations? I grew up in Lame Deer on the Northern Cheyenne Reservation. Oh, so that's not really not too far from here, is it? No, about 40, you know, 42 miles or so. I, uh, I grew up in Lame Deer on the Cheyenne Res, but I'm enrolled here in Crow. Mm -hmm. But um, 
I have, I am Crow and Cheyenne. Okay. Can you educate me a little bit about life on the on the reservation? Well, a lot of lot of us out there, we don't know anything. All we see is just uh, well, there was some protests at, at a, uh, for an oil pipeline and not much else. Right. Well, you know, growing up on the res, it's it's uh, it's kind of like like one huge family. You know, we it's hard to explain unless you've been there but like every time I go back to Lame Deer I uh, even though I may not see a lot of folks in a, lo in a long time right when I drive into town I just feel a sense of home and everybody around there whether we're related blood wise or whatever they're like my family and that's you know and, and there's kind of a kind of an unspoken allegiance where we all kind of stick together um, we're all loyal to each other, but it, you know, I don't know. It's just hard to explain. I'm trying to explain. It's like a big, big family. It is like a huge family who always welcomes you, mm -hmm. and, and, you a, and you know, know so many people on it, don't oh you? Oh yeah, and we're all, you know, all of our parents have grown up together, and we've all of our grandparents have grown up together, and and uh, you know, it's just a, it's just a, a familiarity, you know, just. Of just uh, going home, knowing regardless of how long you've been gone, you know, you're, it's family. It's family. Everybody's you're always family. welcome back. Not just necessarily. Um, it's like Cheers Bar. They always know your name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's switch around. Jump over on the other side before it gets caked up. Okay. This must be an amazing place during the during the Crow Fair when there's. Thousands of people out here. Oh man! So just to clarify for the people out there, everybody's welcome for Crow Fair, right? Right. It's a huge celebration. Uh, all the different families, all the different from, really from all over the United States, and they actually come from all over the world. In actuality. All over the world. But uh, in terms oh. of just uh, your wife's taking care of mom over there. Oh yeah. Hi, mama. <laughs> Sweet. But just in terms of, uh, you know, getting together with uh, all the different powwows and different or different dancing and contests and giveaways and and what have you. Then of course you have the rodeo. Tell me about some of the contests at the at the oh, at the festival like, here with the just a pride well, pride festival. Oh yeah, they, they would come across as. Uh, you know, even the the parade, the parade will have their their own contest, and you know how the the floats or how the people's uh, the horses and all the different elements, because it's a it's just an amazing parade they have every day. Oh, every day there's a parade. Mm -hmm. Wow. Pro fair, and uh, and then of course the contest. You know, you have the the traditional, and you have the fancy dance, you have the woman's jingle dress, you have the chicken dance, and. There's all types, of, and then every age group. I wonder what the chicken dance looks like. I don't know, my wife could probably do that a little later. <laughs> <laughs> She's laughing. <laughs> it might look pretty foul though. The chicky chicky <laughs> dance. Owl. That's a helpful sign. Yes, he is. How many kids do you have? I've got four boys, if I, I'm sorry, I've got I've got four, I have three sons and a daughter. Okay, we're gonna have to pause so I can change out my blade. Okay, all right, that's blade number two coming. That's all that. 
So while he's changing his blade, I just want to say that, that he's, he's got his barbershop in Billings and you can look in the description and get the link to look him up in Billings, Montana. Yeah. Normally he's not doing shaves in the park. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this was, uh... Oh, and by the way, today I, I heard him preaching in the, in the, in the, in church. He's he's got the message going. So, th so th thank you for that for that sermon. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the the church was right in Hardin, Montana, which is about forty minutes out of Billings, mm -hmm. and that's where I've been staying for the last six nights, exploring Crow tribe, exactly. Crow nation, Crow agency, lodge grass, all over the place. Normally for a shave, how many razors do you use? Well, normally, the good blades, you use a couple. This right. is old style. No, boy, this is, this is way too... You can see that. That's a razor. So in in your barbershop, how much are, are services usually? Oh, yeah, fifteen bucks for a uh, haircut, five dollars for a beard trim. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't do face shaves. We we do uh, beard trims with a but we use a teeter. Um, kind of like what I wanted to do before I started this. <laughs> yeah. But we put the lines in and. And we're, the tea edger takes it down pretty tight. Um, obviously, there's a little bit of stubble left when you use the tea edger, but. Yeah, there is. But for the most part, it, you can, the tea edger I use, and take, it takes it down almost to the skin. That must be a good one. It is. But we do everything from regular business type haircuts to flat tops to we even lather people's. Your entire head just shave it off. Shave it, shave them all off. Mm -hmm. Skinhead them. Just to clean. There's some trains going by. It's a, it's a traditional train, don't worry about it. <laughs> traditional train, <laughs> whatever that is. <laughs> now, if you guys do come to my shop, I'm not going to be cutting your hair while you're sitting on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently he has a very nice barbershop. Yeah, shop. I actually got a chair, believe it or not. Running water, oh, yeah. a bathroom. Yeah, even got a flush toilet. Heating, lights. But here we can show off where, where, where Crow, Crow Fair would be. That's beautiful. So this is great. Look, look at this. See the, all these campsites out here. That's that these belong the, to different families. That's just the sliver. Unofficially, of it. right? Mm -hmm. They're all they're all the over the place. It's a huge, huge powwow festival and all that. So we're right in the middle of it. So mm -hmm. that, that's why I think this is awesome. Right. I like that bolo tie, by the way. Oh yes. I got Where'd that you get my that? Granddaughter. She gave it to you. Mm -hmm. Tennis silversmiths. Right on. When you use a, a latherizer, you don't have to keep wetting it down. Mm. It just stays nice. You know the way it is right now? Mm -hmm. It stays that way through the whole uh, shave. It's that machine, right? Mm -hmm. It keeps it hot and it has a lot of uh, uh, moisturizers and lotions in it, oils.
can I ask you a question? Can you speak the local language, uh, native language? Um, I know I can understand you know, a lot of words and, and what have you on both sides. But in our home, English was always the primary. You know, my dad, uh, my dad was ridiculed and he seen his relatives belittled and just, you know, for lack of a better term, brutalized for just speaking their language in school. And, you know, one day my dad was so upset when he was in high school, but he internalized it. And he, he said, you want me to speak that English language? He said, not only am I going to speak it, but I'm going to master that language and I'm going to speak it better than the white man. Now, we're, we remember, we're going back to, let's see, probably 1930, maybe 1940, when my dad was in high school. So we're going way back. And uh, back then, you weren't allowed to speak your language in school. And it, it was a violation. The kids would get whipped. The kids would get whipped for it. And um, and so my dad did. He learned it. He learned it completely. Uh -huh. And so his verbal skills were just unmatched. He probably has a large vocabulary. I well, wouldn't even know. <laughs> he, he's, his, his vocabulary is literally to the absolute limit. He's in heaven now. Now he's okay. So he's speaking a heavenly language. He would be. Love, love to your papa. Yeah, he passed in 1993. My mom left in 1984. My mom was only 52 when she passed. What was she sick from? No, just a heart, heart. She had a heart condition that she had for quite a few years. Oh. And she had valve, uh, valve replacement. Um, her heart was just real weak. How, how, when did your papa die? My dad died in... He was, uh... Moved to the next campground, I mean. 66. 66. And, uh, yeah, he, he was living with us. We were helping take care of him, you know, he, because uh, he had to have all the doctors and, and all of their different, uh, um, you know, appointments for dialysis and all of that. And oh, diabetes. Yeah. He had diabetes, he had congestive heart failure. He was taking dialysis, and, and so, but his, his faith was strong. You know, it, it, it was because of my dad that I came back to the Lord. And it wasn't from what my dad was verbally saying to me. One night I, it was after my dad was, uh, had a really particularly rough night. Um, I helped him back into his bed. This would have been like in 93. I helped him back into his bed, and he was, oh, he was having a rough time. And, I mean, his arm was broke, and it never really healed right either. So he, not only was he carrying the, having the oxygen all the time, dialysis, congestive heart failure, the arm that would never really quite work right. I wasn't serving the Lord then. I, I, um, I always respected it, because my dad was a pastor. My wife was going to church already. I wasn't because I, I figured I didn't want to be hypocritical and act like I'm going just to go. That was my easy way out. At any rate, that night I helped him back in. Helped him back into the, his bed. And, you know, I woke up like about, must have been about 2 o'clock in the morning. And my old MO all the time was to look under my door and see if there was a light on under, in his room. And if there was, I would sneak over there. I just peek on him and see how he was doing. Well, praise the Lord. So far, no blood. No blood. <laughs> <laughs> Please, no blood. Praise yeah. the Lord. Praise it's the Lord. Not over Amen. yet. Amen. Thank you. Just keep praying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no blood today.
just a little bit right there and we'll keep getting done. I like how you just slap ladder it. Oh. <laughs> Pancake make it. I'm gonna try to get the blade in there. You mean you're done? Oh, -ho. getting a beard, a beard brush. Just keep Jason handsome. Keep Jason making videos. Yeah, it's either used for beard or horse's mane. One of the two I know. Ones. I <laughs> I feel like a horse right now. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, I'm going to be ready to go out in Billings tonight. Not really, but figuratively speaking. Looking nice. Alrighty. Oh, how's your knees after after doing the doing a doing a beard trim in a, in the park? <laughs> <laughs> Doing good. Looks nice. At least the ground's soft. I, I, really? Thank you. Thank you. C come here, brother. All right. Th thank you for being my assistant. All right. Good boy. Good boy. All that's right. Israel. That's Israel. And that, that, that's my preacher. Yes. The man of God. And this is my papa. Let me get a picture. One, two, three. The thumbnail? I might. <laughs> okay, Lorna, I want to come and talk with you, okay? Okay. There's something we need to talk about. There's, there's uh, Native American, indigenous women that are going missing. How long has this been happening? And, and, and tell me about it. Actually, this is, has been happening for decades, and it's just now coming to surface where women are speaking out more the indigenous people are speaking out a lot more they're being more proactive when it comes to mmiw murdered and missing indigenous women this is happening everywhere on indian reservations throughout the united states you need to take that off right yeah i still have this uh what, what do we call it this is this is a really cloth. really nice cape <laughs> what, what do you call it chair cloth the chair cloth Okay, so I'm going to sit with you so I, I can I can try to understand okay. this, and more people should know that for whatever the, the real reason is, there's there's people are taking advantage of the of the Native American women. Gangsters are coming in. It's it's a reservation, so people can uh, people who need to get away, cause trouble. They, they they come and do that around here, right? Exactly. Throughout the Indian reservation, as well as uh, throughout Canada. And it seems to me that Native American women are more, um, they, they seem to be more on the rise of the missing and being sent to foreign countries. Uh, well, that has something to, do with, something to do with poverty, obviously, and something to do with, I, I guess, a general, what is it? You explain it better than me. Well, um, actually, 
this this has uh, been happening on the Indian reservation more so because um, because you know the lack of security, perhaps the lack of education. Um, if you've lived on the Indian reservation for so many years and for so long, and then you get on social media, you watch TV, and everything is so glamorized. You know, it's the thing to do to go into the city. And so when you go into the city, you think that perhaps you'll um, be, be um, um, noticed as a model or perhaps get into a TV production or any, any number of reasons. This is why a lot of uh, young, beautiful, indigenous native women go missing because people are putting ads out there for modeling or um, film work in the film industry so they go into the urban area into the city and they end up missing that's a very good point that this is small town america but then on the reservation it is smaller town america women women grew up naive out here they, they, they i mean wow i couldn't even upload a youtube video for days because the internet's so slow a lot of houses don't even have tv well, they might have a TV, but they have no no satellite to get to get to get any channels. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So that that's that's a real issue here. So so that this so the, this message at the end of the barber video isn't just to make aware get get the awareness out to the general public, but also to Native, Native American women growing up. Be careful when when it, it's it's bad things can happen out there. Is that right? Yes, exactly. Don't trust everybody. Exactly. And, you know, um, I think perhaps maybe we have solutions to this. I think in order to protect our murdered and missing indigenous women, we should become proactive and we should use modern technology to our advantage. Like perhaps maybe putting digital, digital cameras on the Indian reservation where um, you know, even on billboards, anywhere on stop lines, anywhere where there, if there's a business area where uh, the gas station, the store, anywhere where um, perhaps an abduction, you know, may be occurring. And if, if we protect our Indian reservation, can you imagine how the rate would probably fall considerably? So we need to become proactive. We need to talk to our tribal officials. We need to talk to the legislator. We need to talk to Congress. We need to take this as far as the White House. So it's a difficult situation. You can, you can see that. So ladies out there, watch out. And we just want everybody to know that, that, that Native American women are missing. And it's, it's a really bad situation, scary situation. And obviously it's, 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 it's scary for Lorna because uh, her, her niece went missing. And so I'm and really, name, I'm really sorry name, that happened. Yes, her name is El, um, Frida Nosesgan, and she's been in missing since 2016. My granddaughter, Red Willow Horse Capture, she was attacked on the rims in Billings, Montana. And this is what has caused me to become an advocate. But like I said, you know, you don't become an advocate because you choose to be. It just happens. It can happen to anybody in your household. It could ha Anybody can go missing. Yeah. So... Let's thank you just, for sharing with us. Thank you. Yeah, lots of love to you, to to everybody, and, and especially lots of love to our Native Americans and, and all the indigenous people around the world. Many with Choni, water is life. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't want to sing the Indian part of it because my throat is so dry. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Thank you, guys. See you later,
All right, bye bye. See you. Stay in school. Okay, bye. <laughs> All right. All right, so what a special experience, right, Mommy? Right. Oh, here we are. We're on the Native American Reservation. Um, Daniel really took care of me, and we got the experience right on the very, very magical sacred lands here where, where they do the festivals every, every year. Very sacred. Sacred rituals and, and everything. It was wonderful. Oh, very I nice. enjoyed it. Thanks for being here, Mommy. I'm glad I was here.